So for this video, this is fully dedicated to our entire experience working on MK1. But before we talk about Mortal Kombat 1, let's talk about the origin story of how this all kind of started. It started with you guys. It started with the fans watching and reacting and being a part of me doing the recreations of MK11. We weren't able to have Gemma here today, but Gemma and I both really had a great opportunity to work with Gameology and we were both able to agree to start doing these videos together and it was really awesome. And I think it was just a fun thing because it wasn't, we only didn't do MK11. We did Metal Gear Solid, mm -hmm. we did Sleeping C Dogs, Sleeping Dogs yeah. Sifu, we did a ton of other games. But being martial artist, I think MK has always struck a chord oh, absolutely, with yeah. us. I was literally Sub-Zero three times for Halloween as a little kid. So I was like, yeah, I grew up on MK. I loved doing those videos. So they were, I feel like you guys could tell that we really enjoy doing those videos, especially the recreation. And that's what really led to a whole other door opening up for us. One day in the middle of COVID, I got a random email and it was from NetherRealm Studios producer. And they said, hey, no, you know, we love your work. We'd be interested in working with you. Would you be open to a mocap opportunity? And I said, yeah, that sounds great. I don't know what any of that really means. I get tons of emails, DMs, everybody in the whole freaking world trying to reach out. So in this industry, you don't really know what's happening until like the check clears, right? <laughs> That's our team saying, when the check, check clears, clears, then you could celebrate. <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah, take it with a grain of salt. I'm happy to, you know, talk and be a part of it, set up a conference call. That's what I literally thought in my head that I was getting booked on a conference call. Get the call. They're like, Noah, welcome to this audition. We're really excited to have you here for MK12. At the time, that's literally what they were calling it, MK12. And I was like, this is an audition? What the heck? <laughs> so I remember the Zoom call literally having like 20 people on the call. And, you know, they're just really talking to me like, Noah, like a lot of us have followed you, you know, on social media previously, but we've seen your recreations on Gameology. And we love the way that you re you recreated the movements. We'd love to see how this can all fit. So they just walked me through, you know, the process of how a normal session would go. Honestly, they jumped right into it. Like we didn't waste too much time. They're like, can we just put you through a mock set? And I'm inside my dojo at the time. And I'm like, yeah, sure. They're like, get on the fight line. They're like, uh, can you show us like a jab cross roundhouse kick? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Somebody stops the call. I swear, I think it was John Martinez. I could be wrong. I think it was Martinez. And Martinez, shout out to you. I freaking love you, bro. And at the time, I didn't know who it was, but John Martinez is like, hey, Noah, I'm gonna stop everybody really quick. Noah, I'm a huge fan of yours. Can you show them like roundhouse tornado kick V twist? And I was like, what the hell did he just say? I'm like, yeah. I can show you Roundhouse Tornado B Twist, no problem. So I show all that and I was like, how did you even know what that is? He's like, dude, I've been watching your stuff. He's like, you're the man, you're goaded for life. He like started like complimenting me in the middle of like this rehearsal, or I'm sorry, audition. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is great. And everybody was like, wow, that was perfect. That was perfect. Every time I do something they're like, perfect, perfect, perfect. I don't think they were really testing my martial arts capabilities. I think they were testing to see how well I could work with other people. It's like, can you take direction well? How is your response to, hey, can you do a roundhouse spin kick? There are a lot of people that'll give you a little bit of an attitude and then they'll go into doing stuff. Especially when you're tired, it's been long days. They're kind of seeing like, what's my response? Like, am I easy to work with? Am I rude? Am I short with people? Am I too bubbly where it like slows down the process? They, I think that's really what they were looking for is not, can I do the moves? It's how did I do the moves? I think that was a really important thing. Um, so anyone that's aspiring to do this job, I think that's something for you to think about um, while you're in a conference call type of situation. They wanted to see me do one weapon. And you remember that? Yep, I do remember that. Yep, they asked me to pick up a sword. They're like, oh, do you have a sword by any chance? And I was like, yeah, sure. Tons of weapons, knives, commas, bow staffs, bow staffs, nunchucks, nunchucks yeah. like anything. And they specifically like, can you grab the sword? I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. I demo my sword movement and they were like, yeah, you're perfect. Let's let's get you locked in and hired. Get booked on and they introduced the idea that they want me to do eight different main characters in Mortal Kombat. And I'm like, that's a lot mm -hmm. of characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a ton of characters. And I remember like showing you, you got to see like, I got to see all the concept art, you yeah. know, they're like, we're going with this direction for the characters. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, I get to a little sneak peek. Oh. And the only reason that Ted got to see is because he's 
part of my team, my training partner, and I asked the team at Nether Realms, like, hey guys, I can easily do martial arts improv, which literally just means they'll tell me, hey, no, we need three beat movements. We need a front attack, a rear attack, and then a jumping attack that can cancel somebody flying in the air. What do you have in mind? And I just have to make it up in studio. I didn't know what I was asking for. It was so crazy, but I was like, hey guys, can I, can I have rehearsals before I go in studio? I would love the opportunity to be able to marinate, really design and create the characters and I'm very, very lucky and, and blessed that I was one of the highest paid performers that they've ever hired. And my rates aren't normal performer rates. And I told them, hey guys, this is my rates. If you'd like to work with me, great. If not, no worries. And they were instantly more than happy to work with me. So I said, hey guys, you guys are paying premium rates for me. I don't wanna just come in the studio and waste your guys' time. I don't wanna have to do reshoots. You, and I would love to be able to do rehearsals. That was a massive mm -hmm. game changer on the rehearsals. And the rehearsals were just literally Zoom calls. And that's where mm -hmm. I would work with my team on coming up with like, hey, this is what I'm thinking. What kind of movement's this? And we'll train it. We'll literally like just garage training. Yeah, what would be awesome is before he'd head out and have rehearsals and have homework before he goes into studio, that week would be Sub-Zero week. And the whole training program for that week would just be based on Sub-Zero's movement, which is absolutely awesome. Yeah, we'd just be like in our underwear outside. <laughs> In you know, California sunscreen, sun, yeah. sunscreen it up. We're like, all right. Sun's your <laughs> Getting our tan on and just training. <laughs> so it was really awesome. And I got to practice a lot of that. And prepping always makes a huge difference. And I'm like, I want to make sure when I do this, anybody ever, if you hire me and if I sign the dotted line, you're going to get 110% energy from me. If I don't think I can do that, I don't show up. I will not work it. Cause I'm like, I don't want to give you half-assed energy. Yeah, and the crazy part that you were telling me too was that um, this is the first time they give a mocap artist rehearsal time too. Yeah. So I, that was a shocker too. Yeah. But definitely when, I remember the stories you would tell me is that when you would go into the room, you just one or two takes, move on. Yeah. Won't have to figure out, oh, does that work? Here, nope, they had it all planned out just like a production on the shot list. So as we go into the filming, it was about two years of filming and it's like on and off. So it's like, maybe I go into Chicago for two weeks at a time and that's like every like two or three months, I would go back and forth for a few years. The animators just told me like, Noah, you're saving us hundreds of thousands of dollars for not having to do too many reshoots, like very, very little reshoots. One of the hardest things that we had to do was Sub-Zero Slide. Absolutely. So yeah. it's just like, it's just the weirdest stuff that you don't think about where I'm in studio, I have to do this movement, I have to slide, and they just need a little bit of that body movement and then land. The problem is, is that their floor grips the shoes perfectly, so there's no way to slide. So it's like, I think we had to like send somebody to the Home Depot, get like a board, and then even the board didn't work, so we had to put water all over the floor and make sure that I get a little bit. And after like hours of trying to figure it out, we finally got like, the smallest smidge of the movement and they're like, great, move on, let's let's just, we'll fix it in post. And I was like, okay, sorry guys. That is like, not even like a prep thing. It's just one of those things you mm -hmm. just figure out there. And um, Carlos, you know, Carlos Mitzi and I talk about him a lot, uh, the action director for MK1 and every other game before that. He really was like, no, you're the first person to ever ask and get granted the permission to do rehearsals. He's like, this is a game changer. He's like, they usually don't ask that or they don't they don't accept it. And I think it's just like the position that I was in. Mm -hmm. And um, I've talked about this previously that they had already written Liu Kang to become the time god because Carlos wanted to retire. They wanted to completely revamp the entire franchise. And they wanted somebody to come in that could tell the story physically, energetically, of the origin story of all the main characters and give everybody a complete new fresh look. And they picked me to do that. So that was like the craziest thing that I got to sit down mm -hmm. at lunch multiple times with Carlos and he's like, Noah, like prepare for your life to change. And I was like, what the hell are you saying to me? This is crazy, what? He's like, this has been years in the making before you even knew it. So you never know who's watching guys. You have no idea, it's insane to think about people are out there already planning, drawing, writing, developing, dreaming of worlds that could involve you. So it was just an insane experience to be able to work and, and design all of these things with such a beautiful team.
I kind of talk about it a lot. Martial arts improvisation actually started with my instructor, Simon Ree, one of, one of my instructors. And I remember we were at a radio concert. It's, I think it's called Power 106, and that's here in LA. And the guy that hosts it, his name is Big Boy. And there were a ton of like artists on stage rapping, whatever. And Master Ree is really, really good friends with Big Boy. He actually taught him. So he asked like, hey, Simon, can you come out and do a little demonstration on stage? So he asked me, he's like, no, can you come with me? And I was like, yeah, sure. I think the day before I'm like, Master Ray, are we gonna prep anything? Like usually like I've done this before, we have like a set choreo that we do. He's like, no, we'll just feel the energy of the crowd and get into it. I was like, what do you mean feel the energy of the crowd? Like, am I gonna fight everybody? <laughs> I was like 17 at the time, so I was a baby. So we get there and then he's like, yeah, no, just warm up. I was like, what is happening? There are like thousands of people outside. He literally has me just go out on stage and just calls out random techniques. He's like, okay, now let's see round tornado spin kick. At a 720 at the end, I want you to forward roll and make sure you don't fall off stage, hit a pose at the end, we're gonna do that five times in a row. Boom, 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 and hit my mark every single time. Then he'll randomly call out, I know maybe 20 different Taekwondo forms. He's like, oh, do form number eight. Oh, do black belt form number two. Oh, do this form. On stage, live in front of everybody. So I'm just making up stuff as we go. And then he taught me a really important skill where it's listening to the energy of the crowd. Like, what do people want to see? What What's the response time of something? And I think that skill set is so important as a performer because acting is listening. When you're working with somebody, you can't just be sitting there, you're with them, mm -hmm, finish your line, finish your line, and then you just say your line like you memorized it. It's the same in fighting where whatever they do, if they attack me, whatever their energy is, like if they're mad and angry and they have a personal vendetta, that's gonna make the relationship very different versus if it's playful. Now I know that I can respond playfully versus I have to be really tense and serious. It's, I, I say martial arts is the art form of life because you understand psychology of somebody fighting. So it's a really beautiful thing to learn what that improvisation means. Now I only believe that 10% of a story in a production mode should be improv. That's just the way that I like working, where I mean 90% of it should be storyboarded out, shot listed out, you know the movements, you know the skill sets. So I asked production, they granted me rehearsals. We rehearsed 90% of it, but there's still that 10% where we're in the room and they're like, Noah, just make something up. We just need something like this. And I do something and they're like, great, move on. That was awesome. Versus most of the MK games have all only been that. So it does show that a little bit of prep can go so far, but having that core fundamental skill set of being able to improvise, listen to the room, understand what they need and make it work, gotta have both. Ted in the room was awesome. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it was an amazing experience. I yeah. mean, I got to work firsthand with uh, Carlos Pensina. And that was awesome because just the way he talks, I took a lot of how he was uh, action directing and stunt coordinating to our film sets too. Yeah. Because there's a lot of times when I'm cam operating and I need to know the movements of the stunt performers, the way he talks, how calm he is. And you know, there could be a lot of chaos going in the set. And he just comes to you, make sure you're safe, make sure you're comfortable. That was so powerful what he had. And I took that to heart. There's a lot of, a lot of big, powerful people in the room mm -hmm. trying to negotiate over you of like, we're missing this, we need to add this. Mm -hmm. And it's stressful, like it's work, it's stressful. We have time limits to hit, um, people are in and out. And Carlos was so good mm -hmm. at just calming the energy of the room and always making you feel special and heard. Mm -hmm. And what do you need? Yeah. Are, are you okay? Mm -hmm. And like slowing the pace of the room down, regardless of how crazy mm -hmm. the energy is, I was like, damn, that's a special person right there yeah. for sure. Yeah, even when it was just one day that I got to work on this project, mm -hmm. that was very powerful that even to this day, like how he talks, that's how I take it onto all of our sets now. I call him an S tier martial artist. And what I mean by that is just like the highest rank possible as a martial artist. I've probably worked with about five or six martial artists in the entire world at his caliber. 
He is an S-tier martial artist to the highest degree, and we both have nothing but respect for him, especially as a coordinator, to calm the room down. That comes with that confidence as a martial artist, that you are a powerful individual. You hold real power and strength. That doesn't just show in the way you hit something. It shows in just how calm you are, too. Mm -hmm. So, Carlos, you're goaded for life. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this episode of Gameology, make sure to like and subscribe. If you guys want to check out more fan films, live action stuff that we're pumping out with Noah, go check it out on his channel. And if you guys want to work out with me online, go to osufilms, osfilms.com. See you guys on the next video. Os.